So, uh, Madam Rasika Chaube, I for all of you who do not know, she is one of our top government officials. In India, we have a position called the secretary or the additional secretary in the government of India. And Mrs. Rasika Chaube is from the Indian Administrative Service, which is called the Civil Services. She joined at a very young age. Normally, people join after at least five attempts when they become 30. And Madam joined the IES at the age of 23. And uh, she is an uh, alumnus of a very famous college in Lucknow. I'm also from Lucknow, so I know that college. It's called the Isabella Thorman College. Everybody calls it IT College. And she has worked as the Joint Secretary with two very, very illustrious people. One is Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, who later became the President of India, and also with the Lady President, Pratibha Devi Singh Patil. So for almost 10 years, she was the financial advisor and the Joint Secretary to these two gentlemen. Later on, she was also the financial advisor to the Air Chief Marshal and Chief of Army Air Force Staff, where she worked in a totally different area. I'm surprised that from Rashpati Bhavan, she went to the Indian Air Force and she got the Raksha Mantri's Excellence Award in 2017. But one of the things I'm very impressed as a metallurgical engineer is that she is, of course, a, a post-graduation in psychology. But her own in-depth knowledge of pellets is so good. So whenever we start briefing her, he says, no, no, Mr. Deepak, I know all about it. And we were all very impressed. For those of you from America who don't know, she, is, uh, she pioneered a scheme called the PLI scheme, which is a huge incentive for make in India. I will now request Mr. Manish Kharbanda, our president. We stole the limelight from him in the beginning. May I request Mr. Manish Kharbanda to formally welcome Madam. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. I think it's a pleasure to have you in the first webinar that the PMAI is conducting. And uh, we are really grateful that in spite of your very busy schedule, you were able to make an albeit for a very limited time. So I like to keep it short. I kept my address to only for you, although we have missed you and we have heard you and you have heard us. So, but just for the benefit of the audience and others, I will just take five minutes to introduce this, uh, what the webinar is talking about, ma'am. Uh, in terms of uh, the interventions that you and your ministry, ma'am, have been making, I think pellets, uh, of course, have got some focus. Uh, steel industry has got quite a lot more focus because that's the dominant industry that uh, the ministry is looking at it. So while the steel industry continues to grow and achieve the Honorable Prime Minister's vision of uh, 300 million tons uh, by 2030, we see that there is a huge requirement of uh, iron ore, which will cause upward of 450 million tons that will be required to produce that amount of steel. And I believe, ma'am, that pellets would be a very integral part for the following reasons. One being that pellets is the only process which is ecologically friendly and having other benefits, of course, which I'll just take you through, where you can use the fines. For example, if, you, if I produce about 204 million tons of iron ore last year, we all, all, almost had 142 million tons of iron ore fines. Now, these iron ore fines are an ecological hazard. It's an environmental hazard. And there is no other process better than pelletization industry, which can actually utilize this and add value to the government as well as the environment. So what has happened is that the pellet industry, which has through the continuous impetus given by your government and the, the, in the, the adept bureaucracy and the policy interventions has grown from about 44 million tons, which was in, in 2014. So we are now about 93 and we continue to grow further. So if you see, we are neck and neck with the production of steel, which is of course a slightly higher at 118 now, with installed capacity of 142. But pelletization is also growing. And for producing those amount of pellets, we are using about 75 million tons to 80 million tons of iron ore fines, which hence, which could not be used otherwise. And this added a royalty of about 8,000 crores and a GST of about 400 crores plus. So 8,500 crores to the government revenue by pelletization alone, which has added as an industry map. And this has led to the fines also getting utilized, which could not be utilized. So what, I, what we are saying is that in addition, 
pellets also have a huge advantage over the other process which is also used for agglomeration called sinter sintering a sintering of course as you would understand and appreciate can only be used for integrated steel plants and because it's very friable it doesn't have very very high cs ccs ccs or tumbler index but uh, pelletization can be having a high ccs it has also a huge impact on environment which is a beneficial impact as compared to sintering because we produce uh, the co2 sox nox is almost 80% less so this also meets environmental goals of the of the government because of the all the climate change that is happening so if you see the in terms of the agglomeration processes there is no substitute for pelletization pelletization in addition is suppose we added to blast furnace up to say about 15% you really get advantage in terms of coking coal which is completely important so we can reduce the coking coal import for 2 to 5% just by pelletization so having high ccs and tumbler of course you know it so i'll not be taking you through all everybody knows about it but in terms of the growth of the industry i think it is very essential that we get more support from the steel ministry because it's not iron ore because we are not in the mining side it's a value added industry which actually goes through value addition and huge investments go into this industry and this industry utilizes the redundant iron ore fines which are required if you see the for the growth of the steel industry you may require about the the resources of iron ore are about 32 billion tons in india of this about 22 billion is hematite but if you 70% would be fines so we need to have processes which can utilize these fines and this can be done only by pelletization as of now because there is it's a, it's, it's a much better process than any other process and would be greatly beneficial if we get a little more focus uh, from all across the government and the industries to give it a impetus in terms of uh, looking at uh, the other technical properties like faster reduction i will not take your time because that is absolutely known where we the, the challenges that we are facing today is basically because the in the, this is not getting the required impetus we would also like to be in the various schemes whether it's pli or whether it's a 115 bab scheme or putting up new pelletization plants to be, be amongst the players and seen very differently and given um, impetus in terms of building it as a further development of the industry and keeping it segregated from the iron ore industry which is a very separate industry ma'am so that is where we request your complete support in terms of the other thing what we will request is that since most of the production of uh, mining comes from three states of chatisgarh jharkhand and odisha if we can have certain advantages given to the infrastructure development in these areas and having dedicated corridors uh, coming up into the in these places the other thing is that the government has been giving impetus to exports of pellets which is giving a huge revenue to the government let me clarify again because there are people and busy bodies who are actually talking about it we require the government support in the courts where people are talking about various things and confusing the honorable courts on export duty and stuff i the a further impetus on export may be required because pellets today are just exported at 15% of the total production and as of now even the total production of 93 million has not been touched our production is about 80% and not all the pellets plant can export it is a very very few pellet plants which are able to export material so we would require continued government support and even further impetus on ex export if the we can be given a, uh, uh, the pellet industry can go further we'll see that the iron ore fines which are hence for not utilization problems are there can lead to environmental hazards may further be addressed through this process so this is what ma'am the request is and uh, that if you can kindly have a look uh, on these issues and uh, we can meet you separately we'll uh, of course submit a paper on our recommendation to yourself it will be very very helpful uh, if these things are done and uh, before i end i would also like to add that beneficiation which is also a key process uh, can help in about saving about 20% of iron ore fines which are less than 58% so if the ministry can also push from their side on how the beneficiation can be incentivized in terms of uh, 
giving the royalty rates which are different, keeping a huge dif in difference between the ASP of uh, high grade and low grade ore. So that this industry, which also has an installed capacity of about 115 million ton and lying redundant and going to be extinct very soon, is actually uh, comes back to life. And these fines can also be further utilized into pelletization. The pellets resource will increase. The last suggestion, ma'am, to you is, is that since pellet plants are not as big to compete in iron ore auctions of the mines, because they, we can't compete with the bigger steel players, we would request that either there are certain smaller mines which are actually given for auction only in the pellet category, or the, uh, the people who have been buying mines are, are actually instructed to have certain percentage of iron ore only for pellets at a rate to be which is determined as on the pellets uh, demand supply basis. This is for your kind of consideration. Thanks a lot once again for joining in the first PMI webinar. We welcome you once again and look forward to your continued support and guidance. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Mr. Manish, I, yeah. yeah. Mr. I would like to, I mean, Mr. Bhatnagar, I need to leave very urgently. So I will just like to now, since Mr. Manish has already mentioned the points, let me first thank you for inviting me to this um, webinar, which you host, are hosting for the first time, I understand which is about the role of uh, iron ore pellets in uh, achieving 300 million ton uh, capacity by 2030. Now, uh, we are all aware that, uh, um, you know, I joined your session when Mr. Uh, Manish Agarwal was speaking. So I'll come to the points which he raised a little later, but let me just touch upon a few points which I wanted to share with you all. Now, we are all aware that uh, in India, around 20% to 30% 20 blending of pellets is taking place as of now. And because of which uh, the total consumption which takes place in the country is around 50 million ton to around 50, uh, 253 million ton, which is happening. And if it, it goes, the business uh, as usual continues. And then we expect then by 2030, it should become 110 to 120 million tons. But I feel that there is, uh, we may have an inflection point. We may move towards uh, using more pellets. And we understand that uh, pellets have a very important role to play. Because as of now, all of you are aware, our CPSCs are using very less pellets. They need okay. to start using pellets a little more than others, which uh, we are trying to, uh, I mean, that's one concern which we have. And... Uh, also, uh, the thing is that the pellet consumption will also in, uh, increase uh, in coming years because of the implementation of stringent uh, environmental norms which are coming in place. Now, you are aware that our Honorable Prime Minister had gone to Glasgow. He's given some commitments. And all that would boil down to our utilizing pellets more because it is environment friendly. And uh, apart from that, we also find that there are other reasons why people are becoming alive to using pellets. Now, some of the points have just been mentioned by uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Manish uh, in his, uh, what he mentioned just now, and uh, even Mr. Manish Agarwal mentioned that, uh, you know, uh, everyone is really concerned about coke consumption. The way the price of uh, coking coal is going up, I think there is a need that coke, uh, coking coal consumption does come down. Then low slag generation is another area of concern for all our steel players. So I do expect that all these concerns and low uh, flux addition, then there is also improving productivity by 10% to 20%. So all these are areas and of uh, uh, concern which our steel players are um, trying to enhance their productivity. So with all this put together, we do expect that um, uh, coking coal, I'm sorry, pellet consumption will go up and pellet will continue to play a very, very important role. Yeah. So, uh, and mm. so all this is possible only because, uh, you know, you all are aware, I don't need to talk about is the metallurgical properties of uh, uh, this uh, pellets and that uh, this is on the only way you can enhance your productivity without making any capital investment. So this is what we keep trying to tell people that pellet uh, using pellet is uh, quite cost effective and uh, there are uh, and uh, like uh, if you see uh, what is happening in countries like uh, the Middle East where uh, gas based steel plants are there 80% to 90% uh, pellets are being used. And uh, similarly, uh, even in European countries, 50% to 80% uh, pellet utilization takes place. So we are lagging behind and I think uh, we will catch up and pellet use will go up. So all of you, um, I, I, I was under the impression that our capacity has gone up to 109 million ton, but I am yeah. going to understand that it is, uh, that, that is the latest figures I had with me. So, you know, that we have, correct. That that's correct. correct. 
Yeah. yeah. So in that case, we have moved uh, quite a bit forward because earlier, I remember when you used to meet me earlier, it used to be 85 million ton. Now we have uh, gone up. And uh, so, uh, uh, and because the Ministry of Steel has always been alive to the mm -hmm. fact that pellets are needed for the steel sector and they play an important role. That is why if you see uh, the national steel policy, uh, just can I just, because I'm being called, just hold on, please. Yes. I'll just, I'll just take another five minutes and join you. Minister has come. I, I'm just coming down. So, uh, the thing is that you all are aware that uh, uh, the national steel policy, when we took out, uh, I would, I think the, the particular paragraphs which specifically talk about the uh, pellets are 4.3.1.3. I mean, that's the paragraph which re refers to it. And there we have specifically mentioned that beneficiation and agglomeration industries would be strengthened through suitable support. That was the commitment which uh, the steel uh, the ministry had taken upon themselves. Similarly, we also had talked about in another para in 4.3.2 that impetus will be given to the pellet industry and um, uh, as, as it helps in mineral conservation by acting as direct feedstock. So, in general, you know, Ministry of Steel has been uh, alive to this issue. We are working on it. And uh, so, uh, I, and we hope that with all this impetus given, uh, we would, uh, and our uh, production will go up, our consumption will go up, and we would uh, be able to um, play, a, the pellet industry will play a very important role. Now, two things I would like to just uh, quickly mention uh, one of which mr manish agarwal had uh, mentioned about you know the goa mines are not being uh, despite the fact that uh, government has given us permission to sell the the 70 million ton uh, 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 the stock which is there in goa mines and other mines let me tell you that uh, this is a process wherein uh, sale has already started uh, selling off their uh, the the stock which they have in other mines other than those in jharkhand because we we have still require some permission from the state government and it's in the last stages. As soon as the permission is, uh, the, the conditions are fulfilled and state government gives us permission, this is on our priority and we are working on this. But you would be very happy to know that sale has already started selling their stocks in uh, Odisha and uh, both fresh fines and the which are, uh, fines which are in their stocks. So that's the process is already on. It's not that we are not alive to this, but there are certain challenges which we have to address and it will move on. Now, lastly, I would just like to mention that, uh, you know, beneficiation is something which we are very, uh, ministry is very concerned about, that whenever we make pellets, we should beneficiate and make pellets. That is why we have taken up with the Ministry of Mines that, you know, we should have some uh, policy, especially for beneficiation, so that uh, 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 we must incentivize beneficiation. And uh, second uh, issue which we are concerned about is the tailing disposal. Now, this has also been, uh, you know, many people have been approaching us that uh, if the mines which are no, uh, no longer functional, if they could be provided, provided for filling in with tailings, if that could be allowed. So Ministry of Mines is also looking into all that. We have already taken up these matters with them. So in, I, I, I really need to go, so I will close it now. But the point I'm just trying to make is that, uh, you know, I had lots to talk to you, but somehow yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. have time left with me. So I just want to mention to you that all the issues which you have, please, I mean, yes. whatever I've heard and we'll whatever we'll money, yeah. please uh, give it to me and we'll, uh, we'll take it forward in the best possible way. Ma'am, one minute, one of our senior members wants to convey a vote of thanks. Just Mr. Puneet uh, Arya, he is the okay. chairman and managing director of Arya Iron and Steel Company. Just Mr. Puneet Arya will thank you. Yeah, th thank you so much. Mr. Puneet Arya, are you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, apologies that I am doing this from a moving uh, vehicle. Uh, I unfortunately had a last minute uh, travel scheduled and unfortunately I had to do this. But uh, I would like to give this word of thanks to uh, you, ma'am. Uh, you, have, you have taken out time and, uh, you know, been present for our first webinar with the PMAI. We're very, very grateful to you for that. You have taken out time from a busy schedule. Uh, your inaugural uh, address has indeed set uh, a tone uh, for wider deliberation and always 
encouragement to the play and we would look forward to your advice and support in the future also i would also at this time like to take uh, an opportunity to thank other prominent uh, speakers who have taken time and burnt the midnight oil and spoken about various uh, uh, issues related to beneficiation and palletization i'm thankful to all the participants who have joined this inaugural session and uh, look forward to interacting with you all further thank you so much and thank you ma'am for your busy uh, for your for your time that you have given us thank you thank you thank you ma'am thank you thank you everyone yeah thank you okay thank you ma'am and thank have a good day yeah we'll come and meet you and uh, give you the recommendations of this seminar very good